now we're going to dive into the word of God. If you would turn your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. This is a letter to the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. So John, you know, John was the author of Revelation, but this is Jesus talking to the churches. And it says, the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but do not, and have found them to be false. Everybody say false. false. You have preserved and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. All right. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do these things you did at first. Mm -hmm. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Mm -hmm. But if you have this in your favor, you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit right. says to the churches. I'm going to read that part again. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Right. Right. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning. good morning. Today's subject, Today's subject is, a question. is a question. And that question is, how did I end up here? Like I said, this subject is going to be about how did I end up here, all right? And you guys may wonder where I got this title from, and the way, the, re, the reason why I put, uh, chose this title is because I know that everybody has been in a season where they were feeling like they did everything right, but everything was just going worse. You know, and the question that you propose to not just God, but yourself is, how did I end up here? Right, you know, you're stuck. For my students that's in, uh, in classes in college, you've been studying for test after test, going to tutoring lessons and doing all this stuff, but still you are in a position where you failed the test, and then you just wonder, yo, how did I end up here? Mm -hmm. Or my parents who know that they raised the kids the right way, but somehow, some way, and for any other reason, they continue to be disrespectful, and you say, I know I trained you up the right way. Why are you acting like this? And then your question comes back to yourself: Is did I do something wrong? How did I end up here? Right? Or you have those, or you have those times where you have an issues in your relationship, and you've been praying and asking God for a man and a woman, and it just won't come to you, and your and your. Uh, your question to yourself, and you're, you're building up stress, and you're building up anxiety, and you're worrying, you know, why won't none of my relationships work? And you're asking the question of, how did I end up here, yeah, right. right? You've been to church after church after church after church after church after church, looking for fellowship with family, but it still seems as if you are getting neglected, and your question to yourself is, how did I end up here? You know, you don't try praying to get out of that addiction. You don't try praying to stop being tempted. You don't try praying to stop being broken and bruised. But you're still in that position, and you're wondering, how did I end up here? Right? You know, and then this month, or in this start of the new year, the whole January, we've been talking about seasons. Right. right? Yeah. And we've been talking about seasons and it's crazy that God put this on my heart to speak about because this is what we've been uh, in this whole season. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and I and I have some news for you guys today and I want you guys to know something. There's one. There's two things that seasons all share. All right. One, they start. Two day in. Yeah. Right? And I don't know who exactly I'm preaching to today, but you may have been in that point in your life where you have been wondering if God has forgot about you. You are at that point where you felt that you're trying your best. You may have not dotted every I uh -huh. or crossed every T, but All you're right. trying. And you're still wondering, how did I end up here? And God sent me here to tell you guys today to prophesy over somebody today to let you know that a season has started and it's about to end. All and you're right. about to go into everybody say bigger. And if you serve a big God, let's give God a big hand clap of right. right there. Amen, amen. So family, we are in a series that I'm going to start today, and it's going to be called Bigger. All right? And Bigger, what the Holy Spirit gave to me as a definition, it is a season where irregular-sized blessings become regular blessings. All right. I'm going to say that again because you guys may have missed what I said. 
Bigger is when irregular sized blessings All right. starts to become regular blessings. Mm -hmm. But in order to experience bigger, you have to be willing to let go of something. All right. Amen. All right. Sacrifice is everything. It was that of Eric Thomas who said, in order to be successful, you have to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. Yeah. And if you want to become bigger, you have to be willing to let go of that thing that's holding you back from achieving it. Mm -hmm. Right? And my question to you guys today is what Jordan is compressing your growth? Come on, sir. Come on, right? sir. Right. We've been talking about this Jordan River uh, this whole month. And, yeah. and it's crazy because what Jordan means is, is the person, place, or thing that separates you from where you are to where God intends for you to be. And God intends for you to be, everybody say, bigger. Bigger. Because his word says he has plans to prosper you, mm -hmm. not to harm you. Plans of a hope and of a future. So he wants everybody to succeed and to experience bigger because his word also tells us that he will open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing that we won't have room, room to contain. To yes. Right. So God wants us to experience bigger, but we have to be willing to pass our Jordan. Mm -hmm. Your Jordan could be that person you're in a relationship with. Your Jordan could be that 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 job that you work in that you know you're not supposed to be working there. Well, I want to tell you guys something that God brought to my attention last night as I was practicing my sermon, and I and I just sat there and I thought about it. God told me to tell you guys that just because you're good at something, that doesn't mean it's your calling. All right, all right. All right. All right. See that, see that. Right. Yep. All right. Just because you're good at something, Amen. that doesn't mean that's your calling. Uh huh. And you're wondering why you have an experience bigger. And the reason probably is because you are operating as something that even got, that God didn't call you to. Uh -huh. Right? And we have to understand that we have to pass our Jordan, that thing that is separating us, to get to everybody say bigger. Bigger. Yeah. Okay? But first things first is that we have to get the first step in order to receive bigger. Right? So there are steps in order to get bigger. And the first thing that I feel that is the right step that we have to go with is we have to get our priorities straight. Yeah. Right? Priorities are things that come as most important in your life. Mm -hmm. The things that you cherish the most. The things that you love the most. The things that you will put other things to the side just to do those things so that you can advance. Mm -hmm. That's what our priority is. But family, I realize that we don't, nobody knows what their priority is really. I'm going to say that again. I feel that a lot of people don't know what their uh, priorities are. All right. And the reason why is because you may make your job your priority. Mm -hmm. That ain't your priority. Mm -hmm. You may make your relationship your priority, but that ain't your priority. Mm -hmm. You may make your goal your priority, but that ain't your priority. Well, the priority that's supposed to be, uh, or that we are supposed to prioritize is God. Amen. Right? Amen. There should be nothing else because if that is not the center of our foundation, nothing else will be built. Well, because God has to be your foundation. And stuff might work and stuff probably will work, but God will take his hand off of it if you don't allow him to be your foundation. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. And I, I was listening to this preacher probably about two years ago, and this preacher, uh, his name is Pastor Mike Todd, and what he was telling us, he was saying that he had an opportunity to be a six-figure music production, uh, music uh, producer, and he had an opportunity to become a pastor, mm. right? Now, he could have moved to New York and been making six figures, or he could have advanced in his calling and been the pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. And now he's wondering, God, you know, I've been loving music all my life, and now I have the opportunity, but you're telling me that I don't need to do that, and I need to stay here. Mm. And God isn't going to beg you to do something. You know, right. tell you what. And he said, and he said that what he did was he started to go, and God told him that if you go, you will be successful, but my hand will be off you. He said, or you can go to the church that I called you to and become the pastor of that church, and my hand will stay on you. And my question to you guys today that I want to ask you guys is: Are you operating in that thing that God calls you to do? Because if you're not. Your, his hand will be taken off you. Yes, yes. Right? Ask King Isaiah when Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter number 7, when King Isaiah and Isaiah had this uh, conversation, and uh, Isaiah had told King Isaiah to ask for a sign um, from God. But before that, in chapter 6, we realized that King, uh, that, 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 that King Isaiah got restored with health, and he got added on life, a life thing. 
right? Yeah. And he got he got added on, and it's crazy because he started to take like like responsibility for the thing that God did with his life. And he started to do that, and God didn't leave him. He just took his hand off him. Mm -hmm. Because if you did it, God don't want you can have it. All right. But we're going to see how God enough you are to handle what's coming. Yeah. And the people, the Babylonians came, and they snatched everything away from King Azar. Because he didn't give God, everybody say glory. Glory. But like I was saying, guys, God has to be your center foundation, because if not, nothing else can work. Mm -hmm. It's like you're building your vision on quicksand. And quick saying it will stay for a minute, but eventually it will vanish. So if you're trying to rebuild a family, but you're not centered with God, it won't work. Well, If you're trying to build your relationship, but it's not centered upon God, it won't work. Uh -huh. You can't try to build something not on God and expect for it to work. Well, You can't try to make room for God. God just needs to be the center foundation. Say it, say it. Yeah. So in other words, I, and, and I, I was going to say this point today. We sing a song that says, I will make room for you. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing statement. Yeah. But I think it's wrong. Yeah. I really think it's wrong. Yeah. Because if you're making room, that's what you're saying is, I will fit you in when I can. Right. Mm -hmm. What it should be is, I will make my room around you. Yes. Because yes. if you are the center foundation, and that means I need to sacrifice everything, or, or if I need to wake up early, if I need to sacrifice my sleep so that you can be first and I can build my day upon you, uh -huh. and then that's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to sit down and wake up and get ready to start praying, but then I'm like, I don't feel like doing it at this time, and then go do something else and expect for my day to be centered around God because it doesn't work like that. And you try to fit them in later on throughout the day. God needs to be number one at all times. All that is our first yes. priority. Yes. And, I, and I realize something, family, is... Whatever you place above God, then becomes your priority. Mm -hmm. right. And watch this, your idol. Mm -hmm. God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. And we can tell this by Matthew 6 and 24. It says, no man can serve two masters. Yeah. For either he will hate one of them mm -hmm. and love the other. Right. Or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Right. You cannot serve God and mammon. Yeah. Now when it's saying that mammon is a synonym for money. But I can, we can relate this metaphorical to whatever it is that we are putting before God. Mm -hmm. And if you're putting it before God, God says it in his word. And if you have the Bible, it's in red letters. This is Jesus talking. He says, you cannot serve both of them. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to make your choice. And if you choose mammon, God still loves you. But his hand is off you. Mm -hmm. But if you choose God, you will flourish. Mm -hmm. Right? And so in our foundational scripture today in the book of Revelations, like I said, we this, this letter is to the church of Ephesus. All right? And if you know anything about Ephesus, uh, this, is the, this is the church of Ephesus, and this is where the book of Ephesians comes from. Right? Ephesus or the Ephesians first appeared in the Bible in Acts 19. All right. And this is when Paul went there and you know, preached the gospel. And this is the longest place that he stayed at, the whole, out, of, out of everywhere he went to. He stayed there for three years. Because Ephesus was so bad and wicked. And Paul knew that he had to spread the gospel so that people can be reconciled to Christ. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we so we witness in this seven letter or, or in this letter to the church that Jesus is walking amongst the church and he's pointing out things that they do well. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you read the scripture, he said, you, you know, you, you, you praise me, you know, you, 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 uh, you persevere, you know, you, you stay steadfast. But then he goes on to say, but. You have lost your first love. All right. Yeah. I, I, I want you guys to recognize something. Priorities is the things that you classify as important or the thing that you love most, the thing that is your first love. You know, and I heard a pastor once say it like this, that God can be several things. He can't be several things. He can't lie. Mm. He can't change. Mm. He can't go nowhere because he's eternal mm -hmm. and he can't be saved. Mm -hmm. mm. God can't be saved. Because if he's second, that thing that's taking your first place then becomes your God. Yes, yes. And we have to realize that if God is not first, nothing else will matter. All right. right? So the issue with the church was not that they were praying every day. The issue with the church was not that they were reading their Bible. Mm. The issue with the church was not that they were, you know, uh, uh, worshiping and doing devotion in the morning. The issue with the church was that they lost the first love. Yes. Right? And, and, and my question to you guys today is, have you ever wondered why it seemed like things weren't going right, but it felt like you were doing everything right? Mm. It really don't add up, because I know I have. 
You know, there have been in seasons in my life where I felt that I was, you know, even while I was preaching, yo, I'm preaching, God. And stuff's still not going right for me. Well. What is going on? Mm. And God literally told me this back in November when he gave me this message. He said, you need to get your priorities straight. Mm. <laughs> All right. All right. Right. So I had to go on my phone and I deleted social media from my phone because social media was taking the place of God. And when social media started to take the place of God, stuff started to go down here. All right. You know, and it got to a point where I called, I even called my granddad. I wrote it down in my notes and I, and I was like, God, you know, granddad, I'm trying everything that I can, but stuff ain't going right. Mm. And God said, you have to get your priorities straight. So I had to erase the thing that was considered my first love at that time to focus strictly on God. All right. Because in order to get to God, you have to be willing to sacrifice your first thing. Mm -hmm. right. right. You know. So, so we have to make it an obligation uh, to have time for God, right? The only time that some people make for God is on Sunday mornings. All right. Mm -hmm. Say that. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and I realized that the letter to the church of Ephesus not wasn't, was not only just for the church of Ephesus, but it was also for the church of right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Because a lot of individuals don't prioritize God throughout their week. And then when they get to church on Sunday morning, they say, okay, God, you can have an hour, 30 minutes, and then I'll let you have this. But then after this, I'm going to just go back to my regular, uh, my regular uh, uh, things. And when you do that, you're not prioritizing God at all. All right. Don't get me wrong. Church is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I heard a pastor say that church ain't enough. All right. Amen. Church ain't enough. It's just a cherry on top. Uh -huh. He says because it's about the plan that you take throughout the week to still honor God, mm -hmm. right? If you go to the weight room and you're in there exercising, nobody goes to the weight room and, without a vision, all right? You know, last in the last few weeks, I've been trying to work out and do some push-ups and different things like that because I want to get bigger. It ain't working. <laughs> but then after a week, I stopped because it's like, man, this thing ain't working. <laughs> And the thing wasn't because I wasn't doing enough push-ups. Uh -huh. It was just because I didn't be willing to put the time into it. Right? So if I go to the weight room and I'm lifting weights, weights or your body doesn't build in one day. Uh -huh. It takes time. Uh -huh. Everybody say it takes time. Uh -huh. You know, but the more you do it, the more your body will build up to it. Uh -huh. Right? So I've been going to the masseuse because my back has been hurting. Like, like crazy. Every two weeks I go to the masseuse and she tells me, you know, hey, you have to start working out your core muscles because the reason why your back is hurting is because your core is weak, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so she gave me a plan that I have to abide by every day in order to fix my back, right? And it's, it's things like sit-ups, you know, things like feet lifts, six inches off the ground, planks, different things like that, so that I can strengthen my core so my back can get healed, mm -hmm. right? But she said something that stuck out to me. She said, don't do it inconsistently and expect good results. All right. And I realized that we can relate this back to church is that we try to do church inconsistently mm -hmm. and expect good results. All right. Mm -hmm. You can't expect consistent results in, with inconsistent actions. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. You know, Matthew 10, and put it, Matthew 10 put it like this. It says, if you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Mm -hmm. And my thing today, or, or what, what Jesus is trying to get us to understand there, is that we have to be willing to lay down ourselves and follow God. Well. But that means that God has to be first in order to, for us to follow him. Mm -hmm. Because it says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. So in other words, that's saying that if I stay attached to the things that I prioritize, then I will not be a follower of God. All right. All right. You know, and as I was going through the Bible, I, I, I was looking at different stories at, that we can relate this to um, of somebody who didn't have their priorities straight. Mm -hmm. Right. And one individual was, was him of the name of Jonah. All right. We witness in the book of Jonah, chapter one, that Jonah is getting directions from God on what it is that he needs to do. And when he gets directions, he disobeys. He literally goes in the opposite direction of the place that God is trying to get us get, get him to go to. Because he felt that God wasn't going to do the thing that he said he was going to do. Right? 
So I have a couple of points that I want to make towards this thing as far as getting our priorities straight. The first one is not having priorities exposes your disobedience. All right. Because if we look back at Jonah's, Jonah's prediction that God wasn't going to was that God wasn't going to follow through with his original plan really gave uh, uh, really gave Jonah the privilege or the opportunity to run away. And once he started to run away, things just started to get shaky. Mm -hmm. Can I give you guys some breaking news or a news flash? All right. If God tells you to do something, just do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Because if you disobey, it only going to make things worse. Mm -hmm. So Jonah literally went in the opposite direction, bought tickets, got on the boat, a storm started going crazy, and the, the river was like, was tearing the boat apart. Then the people on the boat that he bought the tickets from went downstairs to wake him up. He went out and then they threw him overboard. Mm -hmm. And then the river stopped. I mean, the, the, the storm stopped. And then he got swallowed by a fish. Mm -hmm. All because he didn't prioritize the thing that God told him to do. Because he was disobedient. Mm -hmm. Disobedient will never produce blessings. Mm -hmm. It will never produce blessings. Say it. You know. You know, it was one time my mom came to me, and uh, it was it was I was probably like ten years old. And my mom came to me and she told me, AJ, I need you to clean the dishes. Uh, I said, okay, I'll go clean the dishes. But then I ended up falling asleep and not cleaning the dishes. It's about 4 a.m., somebody banging through my door. And it's my mom waking me up telling me that I need to get out there and clean the dishes. <laughs> and the whole time I was doing it, she was just fussing at me. Why? Because I wasn't obedient in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So my disobedience provided worse. Right? So we have to be obedient or prioritize God because if we're disobedient, it will just produce worse. The second point I want to make, family, is that to manage your priorities, it takes discipline. The definition for discipline is to train someone to obey rules or a code of behavior. Or in another trans or another definition is when you get in trouble, uh, so you can realize what you are doing is not good, right? And we witnessed this with, with Jonah, right? He lacked discipline because he didn't follow direction. But he also got discipline when he got swallowed by the fish. And it took him to get swallowed by the fish to come back out and start trying to be obedient to what God had told him to do. So sometimes it takes discipline in order to prioritize your priority. Another thing that I want to point out is that priorities start when unimportant desires end. You know, we make important things unimportant and unimportant things important. And majority of the uh, reasons why is because of time, right? We don't like things that take a long time, right? We want things in the instant. We want things now because fast is just convenient. But fast is not sturdy. We want things now. An example of that is that that's the reason why a lot of us don't pray every day. Because we have been taught and conditioned that God doesn't hear your prayers if you don't pray for an hour long. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, when Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray, he goes on to tell them, do not babble. Because people just think what they say, or if they repeat themselves, God is going to hear them. All right. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to do that in order for God to hear you. Mm -hmm. You just have to open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's enough for God to hear you. You know, another example is reading your word. Mm. You know, and we have this thought in our mind of how can we not discern God? And the reason why is because we don't prioritize him in our everyday lives. All right. And then once you start to pray once a day, you know, and you get to the point where you say, okay, I'm going to pray today. But then you feel like I still couldn't hear God. It's not because that God didn't hear you. You just haven't built up that discernment to hear God. Mm. All right. And that comes from reading your word every day. And that comes from praying every day and making time for God. Right? It's not going to be instant. It's going to take time for us to possess what it is that needs to be prioritized. Mm -hmm. But one thing I do know is that it will take more time procrastinating than it would take for you to just prioritize the thing that God told you to do. All right. Right? So I got my insurance cards in the mail three weeks ago. And I was supposed to been done activating these things. I ended up going to the dentist for them to tell me that I don't have the insurance to get my teeth done. Mm -hmm. But I already had the cards and I, I already called them and paid for my insurance. I just didn't activate my card. Because I said that I can get to it at a later time. Mm -hmm. 
But then it got to the point where I got to my dentist appointment and they had to push my appointment several months back because I just didn't prioritize on getting my car checked. Mm -hmm. How many things has got pushing back or that got pushed back for you guys mm -hmm. because you didn't prioritize the thing that God wanted you to prioritize? All right. We have to do better at prioritizing our priorities. Mm -hmm. okay? Another point that I want to make is not having priorities spoils your vision. About two years ago, I got a vision from God to start flourishing Friday. Right? And this is just me being really humble and, and transparent with you guys right now. I got a vision from God to start flourishing Friday. Right? Called granddad, I was hyped. And God literally told me that this thing is going to touch people mm -hmm. around the world. This thing is going to bring people to us. And I was like, yo, I'm stoked. And I started off on fire, and I started off big, pray, preaching every Fourth of Friday, buying food, doing all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a position where several months went by, and I'm like, God, ain't nobody showing up but the four people who started this thing. All right. So I started to prioritize the number or the platform instead of God. All right. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I wondered, why isn't my vision coming to life? And the reason why is because I wasn't prioritizing the thing that needed to be prioritized. All right. The platform doesn't make you a better person. Mm -hmm. It just exposes mm -hmm. who you actually are. All right. And when you ex when I got exposed to that, or, or when God told me that this was going to touch numbers, I got hyped because I was doing it for the views at the time. Mm -hmm. And when God didn't give me the views, I started to shortcut my way through Flourishing Friday and just do enough to get past. And God literally told me, this thing ain't going to work. And if you don't do the thing that I called you to do, I just give it to somebody else and have them do it. Well. Right? Not saying that God is going to take it back because God is not an Indian giver. But God will give it to somebody else who is more qualified to do it. Mm -hmm. And one thing I made assured and I rest assured that I will not take Flourish on Friday lightly no more. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's just me there by myself. All right. I'm going to go off for God. Because that's what I need to do in order for this thing to build. All right. Okay? Proverbs 29 and 18 tells us, where there is no vision, the people perish. Yeah. Right? So so what happens when you have a vision but don't prioritize your uh, priorities? Your vision doesn't come to life. Mm -hmm. Right? Because a vision without plans is nothing but a wish. Mm -hmm. It's nothing but a dream. A, predict, a, a vision without action is nothing but a dream. The Bible says faith without work is dead. Right? So if we don't activate a plan to achieve our vision, what we end up doing is just wishing for something that ain't never going to happen. All right. Because we ain't work for it. Mm -hmm. Another point that I want to make, family, is that priorities evict long-term discomfort. The key word in that point is long-term. Right? Because if we manage our priorities now, we don't have to worry about uncomfortability later, right? And this is something that I wanted to relate back to Jonah because Jonah didn't have his priorities right in the beginning, and it led to him being swallowed for three days and three nights because he didn't have his priorities straight. You know, an example of that is, you know, with school. A lot of us don't like operating or doing school because of the simple fact that it's just born, right? And it's boring, and, and I don't like it personally, but it provides a foundation for your future, mm -hmm. right? And if we don't prioritize school, what ends up happening when we want to get our dream job is they'll look back at your resume and say, oh, you had a 1.4 GPA? What happened? Mm -hmm. So we have to be willing to sacrifice and take our time to do the things that we need to prioritize now so that we can achieve the things that's coming later, you know? And my question is, what if Jonah sacrificed his own thoughts about what God was going to do? Mm -hmm. Imagine if Jonah would have just said, okay, instead of disobeying, I'm going to just go along with what you're telling me to do. Mm -hmm. And none of this discomfort would happen. He would have just been following God's plan, and God would have blessed him for it. Mm -hmm. Right? He would have never became fish dinner. Well. <laughs> so it's really worth it to just follow God's plan because the discomfort is not worth it. All right. Just do it. Mm. Yeah. Well, family, I want to tell you guys, stop making excuses as to why your priorities are straight. In our foundational scriptures in Revelations, uh, we see Jesus is having a conversation with the church, right? 
and he tells them something that, that, that I didn't get at first, but then I looked up this word and it explained it to, uh, to me. In Revelation 2, verse 6, Jesus says that you hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, and so do I. What the Nicolaitans are, are people who pervert the ways of grace. All right. Who uses grace as an excuse to do wrong. Mm -hmm. And what I realize is that excuses are nothing but uh, needles to build a failure foundation. Mm -hmm. So we have to be willing to get rid of the grace excuses or the excuses and to prioritize God. Because what they did was they taught grace wrong, but used the right scripture. Mm -hmm. And what that's called is Leviathan. Mm -hmm. That's twisting scripture. That's what the devil did in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil did to Jesus when he was getting tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Right. Use right scripture, yeah. but twist it mm -hmm. to make it his own or to make it manipulative. Mm -hmm. So we have to stop using excuses and start using priority. Mm -hmm. Right? So, but I realize, family, that Jesus is speaking to them and telling them to go back to when God was considered their first love. Right? And as Jesus come, explained this to them, uh, he tells them to repent or he will remove the lampstand from his place. Right? So when Jesus is saying, go back and make me your first love, and he says repent, repent is just completely turn around. Right? It's turning around from the things that you were doing and refocusing on the right things to do. Right? And Jesus tells his, you know, Jesus tells his church of Ephesus, Ephesus that they need to repent, make a turn, and go back and fall in love with their first love. Right? And my thing or my, my, my main message that I want you guys to understand today is that if you have been prioritizing something that is not Jesus, repent and go back to your first love. Amen. 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 You know, I've been studying the book of Revelations, and the Revelations, to make a long story short, is ain't nothing but the world should come to end. Right? And you don't want to be a part of those people who are left behind because you did not turn around and make God your priority. I asked a question at Flourish on Friday a couple weeks ago, and that question was, do you think not having priorities is a sin? And then everybody answered, and I started to think, and I said, yes. Because if we don't seek first the kingdom of God, and we seek something else, we're going against God's word. All right. And that's considered a sin. Yeah. And God wants us to get in a position where we prioritize him, and if we aren't, to repent so that we can start to be back in track with him. All right. God will never leave you, but it says in the word that we have left him. Yeah. Right? And if you have left him right now, family, it's the time to make your way back. So in order to see bigger, you have to be willing to sacrifice what's holding you back. All right. All right. So how did I end up here? It's because our priorities wasn't straight. Right. And right now we're going to make a declaration or a statement mm -hmm. to say, Jesus, I surrender that to you. Yeah. And I'm making my way back to you. And I'm having my priorities set on you. And I will start to build my foundation around you and nothing else. Amen. 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 Lord God, we love you. We ask that you just continue to allow us to stay pumped for you. Father God, we ask that, if, that you remove anything that is not our priorities, Father God, and allow you to be our priority, Father God, because if we know that you are our, our priority, everything will be added unto us, like you said in your word. Father God, we love you for everything, and we thank you. And we ask that you just bless this word that it may have uh, transformed something in somebody's lives, that it, when they leave here, they can reevaluate or relook over their priorities and see if Jesus is not one, they will make him one. Father God, we thank you, and we love you for everything. In Jesus' name, we only pray. Everybody say Amen. 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 Amen.